Grief and shock as the Linwood community reacts to the deadly shooting of a 13-year-old girl in Alderwood Mall. Police say the victim was an innocent bystander caught in the shooting and a fight among teens. Como's Jeremy Harris has been tracking the developments in this investigation today and joins us live tonight. Jeremy, any new information about what led up to that shooting? Well, we expect the 16-year-old suspect to be in court tomorrow morning. Police describe this as an altercation between two groups of teenagers in the food court of that mall. One person pulled out a gun and fired. The only person who was struck by a bullet was a 13-year-old girl who police say had nothing to do with the fight. This is Jada Woods Johnson, now identified as the victim of this shooting at the Alderwood Mall in Linwood. Three to four seconds later, I just heard the shots. Byron Odorola and his car detailing crew were back at work here a day after witnessing the chaotic shooting. As soon as uh, the shooting stopped, the guy just ran away towards the back of the AMC theater, and that's all we saw from him. Police say the 16-year-old shooter got away from the scene but was later turned in by his own mother. We started doing CPR. We covered the wound. Our heart is, of course, with this victim who was shot uh, and had nothing to do with the altercation or anything else. This Como 4 drone video shows the area of the mall where the shooting happened. Most of the Alderwood Mall was closed today. When you're visiting the mall here, what do you think about safety? Um, you know, you worry a little bit more, especially for like yourself, your family. People who work and visit here say they're in disbelief at what happened and frustrated that a summer night at the mall ended this young girl's life. It's crazy to experience something like this. Oh, everybody's sort of scared um, because they feel that it's not as safe as they thought it was. Now today, Linwood's Mayor Christine Frizzell put out a statement addressing the shooting in that she says in part, community members deserve to feel safe while out shopping or dining or simply enjoying a nice evening. Our mall and the surrounding areas, our city parks and our neighborhoods must remain safe. As for that teenage suspect, because he's 16 years old, if he is to be charged with murder, according to Washington state law, that case will automatically be transferred to adult court. Reporting live in Seattle, Jeremy Harris, Como News. Jeremy, thank you. Time now for the Como Pulse poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to answer this question. What do you think is the biggest driver of gun violence among young people? Right now, 35% say a lack of parental guidance. 40% say a perceived lack of legal consequences. 19% say guns too easy to access and 5% have voted kids lack impulse control. If you don't have your phone handy right now, remember you can always find this poll online at comonews.com. A teenage boy suspected of shooting and killing an innocent 13 year old girl at Alderwood Mall will not appear in court today. Police say the teen shooter got away but was later turned in by his own mother. Mo Hyder joins us to continue the conversation this morning. So Mo, walk us through what happened today and we mentioned this at the top of the hour but you're just learning the suspect was released from custody? Yeah, that's correct, Steve. We just confirmed that here at the prosecutor's office in Snohomish County. We just learned that he was released on custody for, and he was released on bond for $500,000. Right now, we're not naming him because he has not been officially charged yet, but we do know, again, like you mentioned, he is 16 years old. And that's to recap how he got to this point. This happened a couple of days ago on July 3rd. We're being told by the Linwood Police Department there was some sort of altercation at the food court between two groups, and that's when the suspect, the 16-year-old, from being told, fired a gun and that hit the victim, the bullets hit the victim, Jada Woods Johnson, who is being told was just 13 years old. Police also say she was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, had nothing to do with the incident, was not affiliated or associated with either group at this time. So still a lot of the questions remain about this right now, but he's not appearing in court today. No, well, it's just such a heartbreaking case and the pain of this young life loss has been felt across the community. Talk with us about some of the reaction that's coming in, both from people who live and work nearby and the city's mayor. Yeah, we spoke to several people in this community uh, just a couple of days ago. Keep in mind, it's the, it's the holiday weekend, the school's also out, and this was around dinner time at the food court when this happened, so a lot of people were there just trying to enjoy their times uh, with their family and their friends as well. A lot of people said uh, seeing what happened to the victim, the 13-year-old victim, was just very traumatic. They had a lot of uh, difficulty processing it as well, so a lot of the community is really showing outpour, outpouring of support for the family. We also have some quotes from the mayor of Linwood. She said, my heart breaks for the family of this young lady killed by a senseless act of violence. I grieve for her family as they attempt to come to grips uh, with the loss of their daughter. So you can imagine so heartbreaking and many people are just shaken up by this. 
Mel, I want to go back to that 16-year-old suspect for a second. Do we know why he won't appear in court today and then what's next in the case? Yeah, Steve, that's because he has been released on bond at $500,000. It would have been different if he had remained in custody. Then they would have 72 hours to make that court appearance. And right now, the prosecutor's office, I just confirmed with them, they're still waiting for documentation from the Linwood Police Department. And from there, they'll decide which charges and if they're going to pursue charges in the first place. Now, there's no telling when that's actually going to happen, especially with the holiday. Things are a little behind right now, so people are also getting caught up as well. So his appearance could very well be sometime next week or even beyond that. We're going to certainly stay on top of that, though, and give you those updates. Certainly a lot of questions that need answers. Thank you so much, Mel. Thank you. I automatically thought about um, Jada's family mm -hmm. when we mentioned that at the top of the hour of the suspect getting released um, and just what their initial thoughts would be knowing that they're dealing and trying to process that heartbreak of losing her and then you have a 16-year-old who's accused of ending her life uh, who was released from custody. And I do realize that there's a legal process, uh, even though you're dealing with a very high-profile type of crime when you're, yeah. you're being uh, accused of murder. Um, but I'm, I'm, my heart goes out to them because, you know, they're, they're processing that pain of losing a loved one. Um, and I have to assume processing that pain of, of knowing that the person accused of ending your daughter's life or sister, whatever the case might be, is now out of custody, mm -hmm. not in custody anymore. And I don't know who makes these decisions. Yeah. I don't know who allows that, but something has got to change. I know that's going to make a lot of people upset. Yeah. Uh, beyond just that community and beyond Jada's family, um, I've got to check our website and just read the comments. Um, this is something that people were afraid of. Yeah. Um, you know, these suspects not facing... Uh, consequences for the crimes that they commit and we'll see what happens down the line but for now we know he was released on bond and people will probably argue that should not have happened yeah mm -hmm. and obviously prosecutors have to look through all of the evidence that's being collected um, with the police investigation wrapping up they have to talk with witnesses they have to make that determination about what charges um, would be coming forward against that 16 year old suspect assuming that they'll probably press charges at some point. Um, but there definitely is that legal process and it can be frustrating at times, um, especially when you're dealing with a lot of emotions and you're dealing with loss of life. Um, so we will certainly, certainly follow it in the days and weeks ahead. Another young life cut short by a shooting at a local mall. A 13-year-old girl was shot here and killed yesterday at Linwood's Alderwood Mall. People, police say she was just an innocent bystander. The 16-year-old boy accused of killing her has been arrested. I talked with Jeremy Harris tonight about how people are feeling after that deadly shooting. Well, Jeremy, thanks for being with us here in Arc Seattle tonight. So, uh, you know, just a tragic case. Uh, the more we learn, the more tragic it becomes. 13-year-old girl shot and killed at Alderwood Mall, a place uh, you'd think you'd be safe at, uh, just, just walking around. Uh, what have you been able to learn today, and what's the latest on this police investigation? Well, we know police have a 16-year-old boy who's in custody, and they say they anticipate he will be charged with murder for this case. We've learned a little bit more about what police believe happened inside of that mall. It was about 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. That would, that would have been a very busy time at the mall, of course, the night before the 4th of July. Police say that there were two groups of teenagers who got into a fight. During that fight, one of the teenagers pulled out a gun and fired it. And they say that it struck this 13-year-old girl, and they say she was not the intended target. She had no involvement in the fight, but she's the one who ended up getting shot. That, of course, caused a panic at the mall. Everybody went running out, including the suspect who got away for a few hours, but ultimately police said his own mother brought him to detectives and turned him in after seeing what had happened at the mall. You know, I don't know if you know this, Jeremy, or if this is something that we've been able to learn yet. I know it's still early in the investigation, and we see so many kids with these guns these days, and, you know, everybody wonders how they get their hands on the guns. But uh, I understand last night they hadn't found that gun that was used in this specific shooting. Do you know if they found the gun yet? Yeah, so that's one of the questions that we asked Linwood police today. They didn't give us any new details about it, but it's important to note 16 year olds are not allowed to possess handguns. And so that on its face would be a crime 
in and of itself. And also, the again, guns are not allowed at the Alderwood Mall, according to the signs that are on the door. So there's a lot of layers to this, and I'm sure detectives are going to be looking for that. And also today, I'm sure detectives are trying to speak to everybody who was in that food court when this fight happened. And one of our questions that we still don't have an answer to from police is whether or not any of the other teens who were involved in that fight are cooperating with them or whether any of them potentially could face charges. Do, do we know at all if this was a gang-related issue or these were just two groups that came into fights? I know there are, you know, there are a lot of gang issues up in that area, especially in Snohomish County. Well, and that's always, Preston, the question that comes to mind. And, you know, police have been kind of dodgy about using that word. Um, sometimes they'll say youth peer groups or, but, you know, we would call them gangs, of course. But if we don't know if that's the case here. Just what we've heard from police is that there were groups of juveniles who were in the mall. There was a conflict and they have a gun. Is it a reach to think that a 16-year-old who brings a gun to the mall might be affiliated with a gang and is having a fight with somebody else? That could be the case, but we don't know that at this point. And so this is not something that we can speculate on, but certainly something we're asking police about. And Jeremy, do we know anything more about why that 13-year-old girl was at the mall? I mean, I understand she was hanging out there, the unintended target, an innocent bystander. But do we know if that she was, was hanging out with any of the people in any of the other groups, or was she just basically walking through the food court, happens to get shot. Well, and Preston, that's the really the most tragic element of this is, you know, this this young lady, according to Linwood Police, she had zero involvement in anything about the altercation. She was a completely innocent victim who just happened to be standing in that food court. Now, we went there to the mall today and saw the area exactly where this happened. And if you think about 6 o'clock at night, on a weekday, the night before the 4th of July, that area in the food court, especially at that time, there'd be a lot of people there getting dinner. This could have been uh, youth or kids who had gone to the mall to hang out. I mean, it really is. It was busy today, and the mall was closed. And so I'm sure that last night it was very busy with people who were going in and out of there. And I'm sure there was, you know, potentially hundreds of witnesses. Our photographer who went up to the scene actually spoke to some of the witnesses, including one person who tried to help and actually perform CPR on this girl before the paramedics got there. They just described it as absolute chaos. And they said that one, the second the shots were fired, people went running in all directions. We also heard today from a, a nearby business. And he said, the, the guy who we interviewed said, he ran out to his car, got in the car and drove off because he didn't know if this was an active shooter. He didn't know right. if he was still in danger. So this was just such a panic that went down during in the mall at the time of the shooting. And in all of that panic, the suspect got away, but ultimately it was his own mother who brought him to detectives. Yeah, I'm curious. Do we know if there was just one gunshot that happened inside that mall, or do you know if he fired that gun multiple times? So from the witness that I spoke to, he told me that he heard three or four shots, and he would have been very close to it. So it sounds to me like, based on the witness accounts, there were multiple shots that were fired, which is probably what sent that panic going through the mall. And of course, one mm -hmm. of those rounds we know, in fact, the only round that hit anybody did hit the innocent 13-year-old girl who ended up passing away from her injuries. Wow. And then the mall was it was closed to it because of 4th of July or was it back open? I, I can't remember what. Well, that was one that. question we had, Preston. Uh, they said the mall was, the signs on the door said closed for the 4th of July. I was kind of wondering if that was a uh, pre-planned closure or if it was also done after the shooting. But the signs on the door said that it was closed for the holiday. So last thing here, Jeremy, I know today, obviously a holiday. Uh, tomorrow, do we expect that? 16-year-old suspected shooter to be arraigned in court? Yeah, so we would expect to have a court hearing usually the next business day after an arrest. And so that would we would expect that to be tomorrow. Since it's juvenile court, we have difficulty confirming exactly who's on the court calendar, but it's certainly something we're going to be there watching and we're going to be updating. And, and we'll see when we can get a police report or if Linwood police will divulge a little bit more. We did get a statement today from the mayor of Linwood. She called this a senseless act of gun violence. And she talked about saying that, you know, people need to be able to feel safe when they go to the mall, when they're out in the communities, when they're at parks. These are communal spaces where we all end up going at certain points. And she emphasized that everybody needs to feel safe there, that this was what she called a senseless tragedy, that this young girl lost her life while just hanging out at the mall on a weeknight. Yeah, we, we talk about this a lot. And we see so many kids, you know, with guns they should never have in the first place, and especially not using them uh, to commit a crime. It'll be interesting to see uh, if the judge in this case or prosecutors in this case, uh, is what I meant to say, uh, you know, try and charge this 16-year-old as an adult to send a message throughout the community that you can't do this, you can't commit crimes and shoot kids or shoot other people just anytime you feel like it when you get upset or get into a fight. Uh, that's what I'm curious to see if this takes place or if they try uh, the suspected shooter as a, as a juvenile 16-year-old and uh, that 
juvenile uh, would not be facing that much time uh, if they went to a juvenile prison. Well, and that, that's certainly something that prosecutors will have to weigh, but the Washington state law is very clear that anybody who's 16 or 17 years old and is charged with what they describe as a serious violent offense, which would include murder, their cases are automatically tried in adult court. So in this case, if the prosecutors were to move forward with murder charges against him, just based on his age and the charge, that case would automatically be handled in adult court. Now, of course, uh, we have covered those cases where people were juveniles when they covered adults, and we've seen some of the controversy around how long the sentences have been. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I covered a, a murder sentencing from the Tequila South Center Mall, where uh, the suspect was uh, a young adult. I believe he was uh, 17. One was 17, one was 18 at the time. And, uh, you know, they, they both got around 10 years in prison, and that was a mm. conviction for second-degree murder. So I understand absolutely what you're saying there and some of the questions about, you know, how seriously or what consequences could somebody in this position be facing. But we know if they go with murder and he's 16, it's going to go to adult court. Yeah, it seems like they need to send a message uh, one way or another so other kids don't see this and be like, ah, I can do this too, and I don't have to spend that much time. Uh, yeah. You know, I just hope that a message is sent, a strong one throughout the community that has a ripple effect so other kids don't, uh, you know, try and do this or, or we can at least somehow stamp this out so uh, we don't continue to see this kind of stuff happen. Well, Jeremy, thanks so much tonight and uh, thanks for being with us here on Arc Seattle tonight. Please keep us posted as, uh, as this continues to develop. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for having me, Preston. And that brings us to tonight's Pulse poll. This is the question we're asking this evening. What do you think is the biggest driver of gun violence among young people? This is a live look at the results coming in tonight. You can see 40% say perceived lack of legal consequences, 35% lack of parental guidance, 19% guns too easy to access, 6% kids lack impulse control. To vote right now, just scan the QR code there on your screen. We'll be sure to bring you the latest results later on in the show.